Hi, this is Br'er Caleb, PhD. My pen name is of a citizen of the other kingdom, and the PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We will continue to dig for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Kathy Sheen shared a link with me about EMF through Facebook, and I had to respond to this article for too few people to know what is happening around them. Hi friends, in Canada, I used to have a gentleman's farm with plants and trees. When I bought the place 50 acres or 20 hectare, I planted somewhere between 1,000 and 1,400 trees. Some mature and some less, the birds and the bees, exceptional wildlife that looked like it was lost, came back. Yet, my farmer friend Stephen and Vern had electrical wiring hanging all over their property. He owned about 100 acres and 50 cows. His cows did not produce correctly, and he was often sick. We met regularly for over 10 years. I taught my friend's little boy how to milk a cow. When he went to the doctor, he got many pills. Nothing worked, and as you know farming is not for the weak. Eventually, a friend introduced us to EMF, which we are discussing in the group. Both Canada and America have a significant problem yet many know very little about this subject, deadly for some. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity EMF, electro smog also known as autoimmune disease. EMF triggers in certain people the most painful experiences. My wife and I moved from a house opposite a big tower with many dishes for the internet to our farm, without the internet or without overpopulated towers with dishes. Right away, all the hassle was over. When I planted my trees, nature restored, and wildlife replenished, for I could not help myself. I had to imitate the Dutch channels, so my koi and flora could live in abundance. I first had one pond and eventually, we ended up with several waterfalls with over 22 million liters of water flowing through our man-made channels and ponds. Why am I telling you this? First, I miss that lifestyle, and second, the doctor is right, and you and I can do our side of the job by being aware that all that stuff about G5 is all about control. I described this in the deception protocol, the prodigal son blueprint. Did Trump kill JFK? No, but he sure killed the American dream for many. I stepped on some big toes and eventually lost millions of dollars during an 18-year legal battle. Effectively they deported me back to the Netherlands. I did pay the price for speaking up, are you ready to speak up regardless of the consequences? Br'er Caleb, PhD. Tough times never last, tough people do. Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. For apparently we have missed a few. Over the centuries that we have been a common nation, a great nation. When I say a great nation, I mean the United States of America, Canada, Europe, all the individual countries have grown into very prosperous countries compared to many, many centuries ago. However, we all made the same mistake. And that mistake is the crime of a self-styled Christian, DJ Trump, President of the United States of America. And you will say, who are you to say that Mr. Trump 
it's a South South Christian and he made a, a mistake. Folks, that mistake is not only for Trump, it's a crime. Because ignorance is the greatest crime of the enablers of Mr. Trump. And that is what we are going to deal with. Let's take a look and see what is the real problem. I can imagine that Donald Trump had the desires to become the greatest businessman in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. However, when we have dreams and aspirations, then as a church, where do we stand? What is our biggest desire? To follow the Lord in all that he established for us. And the crime that the self-styled Christian, Mr. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of the Americas has started and now finishes with a big golden turret. And that is exactly what I tried to say, folks. You have been hooked, wind. What was his crime? Ignorance. Ignorance from the beginning. Ignorance as a fact of life that he failed to understand that you cannot just do everything only because you have connections. Now, what are the connections? If you listen very carefully to the veterans, you will understand that the connections go way back, all the way to 1983. Now, in 1983, I was 33 years of age, and I understand that Trump was 39. I was in the Russia in the early 73, so I was 23. But apparently, somewhere, somehow, he made some connections in 1983 and people have been following him. They were looking for people that they could work with, they could mold in their hands. And when I say they, I'm talking about people that always want control, always are led and moved through money. Some of those guys are called Freemasons. Others are people that call themselves Mafia and others that call themselves Christians. Yes, folks, they all go hand in hand. Have you ever read my book, The Prodigal Son, Deception Protocol for the Prodigal Son, Blueprint? I urge you to take a look at it because the problem that we have as a society is very simple. We all have been hoodwinked for the fact that we did not check out the small blueprint See, when Christianity came on board, it was not something that happened because the little Jesus was born in Bethlehem. I love the pictures too. I love the fact that God used a small little babe born in a manger. Unbelievable. And he became the overall conqueror. We all started off small. But you know, the reality was that God wanted to show that with a little tiny seed of faith, we can overcome everything. And this is where the problem started. The ignorance that we have as a society, because we have accepted the fact that the Jewish people, that is where Jesus came from. But we don't like to talk about the Jewish aspect, but Jesus was a Jew. And I honor and respect the Jewish people for that. However, the Jewish people also made a mistake by rejecting Jeshua HaMashiach because that was the name of Jesus known to the majority of people that call themselves Christians, about two and a half or three and a half billion people that are affected by the lifestyle of Christianity. But what is Christianity? Was Christianity born when Jeshua was born in a manger? And when those three kings came over, wise men, they wanted to honor and respect the newborn king? When you see the front of this video, I put Trump there because he was one of those three wise men, wise in his own eyes. He knows everything, but he only left a golden dirt. Folks, that screwing around 
people that manipulate you is constantly going on. And why is that? Because when we look closely at the foundation of the Christian church, the body of Christ, when we look closely at the Jewish foundation and the aspect of the foundation of the Bible, and when we look very close the time that we live in and what is about to happen, then you and I need to spend some time. Let's take a look at what that means for all of us. So one of the questions that I had before was, is there a difference between a spiritual church and a carnal church? Does one see the hand of God at work in ways not recognized by the people of the simple faith? Well, what does that mean, faith? Faith is when we put our trust in God Almighty. The majority of people say, well, that we do, of course. I mean, I was born a Christian, I was raised a Christian, I didn't know better than to trust the Lord with all my heart. But did I? See, the problem that we have today is that we have so much sophistication in this society. We can move way beyond. And recently, as of a few years ago, there was a Corona Pfizer. A Corona Pfizer is also compared to some kind of time machine. But in reality, it was simply the Pope Francis opening the doors of a vault of 53 miles of books and maps and documents over the last 1200 years. And in that vault were certain documents about Jesua when he was born. The people that lived around that time that were historians like Josephus Flavius, he wrote about it and Plinus, man that were looking to record the history of the beginning. And so they were used and they confirmed that indeed Jesua was born. He was born as a man. He was crucified. And yes, indeed, he was risen again. Awesome. And then there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But what we don't read very often, because those papers have been moved to a vault of the Vatican, which hardly anybody knew, except certain people. And those people were in power. What happened from the time that Jesua was born till the time that he was crucified and then after that time? In other words, Jesus was born, say, at zero. 30 years later, he was crucified, about 33 years. But some people have him around 80. So between 30 and 80, something happened. There were disciples, folks. Jesua was a rabbi, and any rabbi that had some following had disciples that were learning to walk and talk exactly like the rabbi. And Jesua HaMashiach did the same. He trained for seven years his disciples to be the children of light. See, the biggest problem that the majority of people miss is that God set out a light. And that light was Jesua HaMashiach. He was born in a manger and people recognize that as such. That is awesome. But what they fail to forget is he didn't stay that little baby in the manger. That is what the enemy wants you to believe. He became a power. He became the light. He became the way, the truth, and the light. And God said, and this is what I want you to do. For all those people that finally understand that restorative justice has prevailed, God and mankind are reunited. And we have the same opportunity like Enoch. Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam. He was a man that had learned from his great, 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 great grandfather, Adam, how to talk with God, how to walk with God, how to respect God, and how to make sure that you honor God in all he wanted. And as he did that, God said to him, come on, Enoch, come with me. 
Now, Enoch was 365 years of age when he moved with God up to heaven. And his son, most of you might know him, is called Methuselah. Methuselah was almost 1,000 years old before he passed away. So we have a group of people that have a secret. One can walk with God without dying, and the other one dies after a thousand years. Now, I know that nowadays we have a lot of biohackers, biohackers that are concerned about living healthy, living strong, living an extended lifespan instead of dying young. And so pay attention, biohackers, because this is very important. When you are working on your body, you need also to work on your spirit. Because the beauty is, the crime of ignorance is that we recognize that we were born or created. We have a body. We have mental ability to speak and talk and interact with each other. And then we are also designed spiritually. And what Yeshua HaMashiach created was the way. Now, why was it so important that we followed that small or narrow path in versus the Broadway, not the Broadway from New York, but the Broadway. It's so easy. It's so simple. Just raise your hand to become a Christian. That is the Broadway, folks, because in 300 years, the emperors have tried to destroy the faith that the first century believers had. They were finally reactivated. They were excited. They were sharing the love of God. And they were the children of light and that light shined as it should be. And now in 325, the emperor is fed up with it. Over, kaput. Anybody that wants to be a follower of Yeshua in the arena. Or you do what I say. And what was that? He prayed directly to the God of Sun. The Sun God. Hmm, interesting. But he had also a whole bunch of other pagan gods. And therefore he mixed the two together. He said, if you do this and this and this, I make you, and he make, pointed out the head guy that was in charge at that time as Pope, and you will be powerful because everyone else will be a Christian. And if you don't want to, <laughs> we'll kill you. And that happened in 325. And people became Roman Catholic. That was the name of the church that was invented in 325. And the people that were following them, they called them Christians. And why did they call them Christians? Because the Christians had been following false gods, the pagan gods, since 325. So for almost 750 years, they have been following the gods from the underworld. Those were the Christians. And so... Now, today, in 2020, we have a major problem because we all have sacrificed our wisdom. Folks, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is a crime. Ignorance is the great, greatest crime of the enablers of Mr. Trump because the way that I set this up was PMS versus PMS. I spent 20 years in court, almost 20 years in court, millions of dollars in defense because I said no to a Freemason, the head of the Freemasons. They wanted in on a deal of mine. And when I said no, it cost me dearly. And in that period of time, I learned the law. I learned to understand that you need evidence when you want to win. If you don't have evidence, make sure you have precedence. And I learned the basic foundation of the law. And with that, my eyes started slowly to open. Where is the evidence of Christianity? Where is the evidence what happened in that little manger when Jesus was born, that we became Christians, that we became pagan Christians? Yes, folks, that is what we're dealing with. And the sorry fact that Mr. Trump was chosen in a position of president while he was not ready for it or not ready at all shows. But you know, Mr. Trump is not really to blame. 
uh, those in enablers, the ones that wanted to use him based on their pagan Christianity. We did something that Satan lost. We use politics, we use money, and we use what? Spirituality. You see, the church is a powerhouse. But what does God want us to do? He wants us to be followers and walking on the way, the narrow path. And that narrow path is called the way, the truth, and the light. And why is that? Because God's presence is there. We were allowed to be in God's presence, to walk with him. He is going to teach us, he will show us, and he will direct us so that we can deal with pandemics, that we can deal with diseases, that we can deal with all those things. Why is that so important? Because the difference between a spiritual church and a carnal church is that we focus on God's presence. A carnal church focuses on politics, money, and spirituality or religion and that's exactly what we see today see folks there is nothing wrong being politically active if that is what you want but when you use that to force people to move in a spiritual direction you've got a major problem because that is not the way god created us see there is no freedom and there is not even any progress that you made you say well look at what mr trump did no, folks, Mr. Trump doesn't understand what compassion is. He has some limitations. All he can think of is money. And anybody that thinks and serves mammon is full of money. The law was planted to reward the children of light with healing and abundant peace, with long life, with fruitful seed of everlasting blessings with eternal joy in immortality of eternal light. And that is what God wanted for us. And you know what happened is? The Lord said, I will make known unto you deep and mysterious things. For I tell you truly, all things exist by God and there is none beside him. Direct your hearts, therefore, that you may walk on the right path where his presence is. That is why we need to walk the narrow path, the way, the truth, and the light. And if you want to be a pagan Christian, you can do everything under the moon. It sounds great. And I cannot judge you on it because I am not a judge. But I can tell you one thing. I know an example of Saul. He was the first king of Israel. And when he became king, he was a great man. He did exactly what God wanted. But when he became all powerful and was 30 years a king, he also became very ignorant of the fact that God's law is yea and amen. And when he went against the will of God and sacrificed what he was not allowed to do, only a priest, he was condemned and he lost his kingship he lost his kingdom, he lost his life, he lost his children's life. And why? Because he did not do what God wanted him to do, to be obedient to the law. And that is exactly what you and I have to choose. Are we obedient to follow the way, the truth, and the light? When we do that, God will give us wisdom. He will give us understanding. But if we don't, and we want to become an ableist of a man that is so full of himself, they can only hand you a golden turd for those that are seeking money, that are seeking a job, that are seeking food, that are seeking housing, because over 12 million people are, are really in a very dire position. Folks, it is not fun to be manipulated like you have been. And the only way that I can urge you to do is seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Because as you seek and as you follow the path, God himself will direct you. He will guide you. He will inspire you. He will open doors. And if you ask me, why do I know that? Because I tell you, I found myself flat with my face on the mud in the shit of the pigs. I was in jail, folks, 
sentenced for six years, everything lost, millions of dollars, billions of assets, and everything was gone. And God restored us. And I tell you, I am so grateful for that lesson because I was a very tough student. I was hard-headed. And some of you can relate to that. I understand Mr. Trump because I was in that same position. But there is another thing that I had to learn, to ask and repent, to accept that I was a prodigal son, not a Christian, because the name will not help you folks. You are a prodigal son. And if you can come to that understanding, that is what will help you. Repentance. You repent and God will turn this misery around because you now have opened yourself for understanding of the voice of God. Now remember, tough times never last. The tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.